Uh, first, first of all, I'm, I'm not exactly a philosopher, but more an intellectual historian, which will be the point here. Um, first of all, excuse me for um, an infinitely more trivial uh, lecture than the one we just heard. Um, I first want to thank uh, Eric, Peter, and all the people who helped them uh, for organizing this symposium and helping, uh, helping us tackle an issue that we should not take for granted, transdisciplinarity. Um, and thank you for inviting me to deal with theory, which might be a trap, that we will see. To start with very simple things, theory today might be the name given by the English-speaking intellectual community to contemporary continental, in fact mostly French, philosophy, or to part of it. Uh, it is thereby the name of a transdisciplinary form of conceptual enunciation, as well as, and not without connection, as the name of a very desirable product, rich in symbolic capital, on the globalized market, academic market, of texts and concepts. In fact, the word theory itself is almost entirely absent from post-World War II French thought, and has been ever since. While undergoing a spectacular inflation among English-speaking humanists, and the various commentators and free-minded continuers of late 20th century French philosophy. Thus, how to discuss theory in the light of the latter's legacy, if not as a paradox, as a trend, and indeed as a symptom. And to the extent that every trend, as much as every symptom, tend to have a limited life expectancy, isn't it even too late to still be speaking about theory today, in 2010, to paraphrase the opening words of Hegelian master Jean Hippolyte's famous lecture at the 1967 Johns Hopkins Conference on the language of criticism and the sciences of man, remembered as the primal scene of what then were not yet called in the US French theory. What Hippolyte had said is, isn't it too late to still be speaking about Hegel today? Yes. Theory is a problem, for there might be nothing specifically philosophical about the concept of theory, while, while that concept might well be the most transdisciplinary of notions. Maybe it has become a surrogate philosophy, or what Americans like to call post-philosophy, in their infatuation with the disenchanted prefix post. But it remains outside of the quintessential philosophical approach notwithstanding the institutional and disciplinary exteriority of theoretical discourse away from the strictly defined disciplinary discourse of philosophy. For at least four or five decades, and again, mostly outside of France, literary critics, social scientists, art theorists, and the various experts of minority studies have had the monopoly of the discourse of theory freely and randomly reappropriating fragments of philosophy's discourse to put them to work in a different political and disciplinary context, to fashion an unprecedented transdisciplinary discourse outside of the philosophical discipline, even if more permeated than ever before with scattered fragments of philosophy. And to make my case worse or my task harder, I would add that with or without the ill-named French theory, theory is much more of an English and American cultural tradition, and I assume the problematic character of that and, English and American, than it is a French one. The former obsessed with literary theory or else with general models in law or economics ever since the end of the 19th century, while the latter, the French tradition, keen on lyrical speculation and metaphysical overtones, has never liked theory, at least in the traditional sense. I even found, it's a very biased example, but why not, I even found a typical quote in Marcel Proust's Finding Time Again, the last volume of Remembrance of Things Past, quote, a work where there are theories is like an object on which one could still see the price, end quote. So that there is much more theory, both as a signifier and as a type of discourse, 
among the users, recyclers, and strategic politicizers of late 20th century French thought than there is in the letter itself. But at the same time, if one envisions philosophy and its extra-philosophical users, or even English-speaking and French intellectual scenes, as all part of the same continuum of discourse, that is, in the intellectual historian's approach of all conceptual propositions in terms of discourse, well then, French thought from Althusser to the last Derrida, almost 50 years, ought to be included in this inflation of theory as a new transdisciplinary discourse in the broader field of humanities. It ought to be fully associated, even if it is less explicit or ostentatious about it, with the theoretical demon which has started possessing the Western intellectual body, to remain in the, the, in the theology of Alain de Libera, around 40 or 50 years ago, as a systematic debunking of common sense, as a certain convergence of the aesthetic and the political, as a career strategy in the more trivial terms of the academic job market, or simply as the most vivid polemical object, as, exempli as exemplified, to take just one example, with the hotly debated 1982 issue of American journal Critical Inquiry, titled Against Theory. And even beyond the discursive limits of intellectual rituals and academic games, it has been justifiably argued, and even by some of the French thinkers in question, that theory in this new sense was more genuinely practiced by musician John Cage or architect and critic Robert Venturi than by professional theorists. But theory in what sense? What is theory in such uses of the word? And what does French thinking in the, last 20th century, in the late 20th century have to do with it? Such questions can only be addressed, in my view, not exactly in historical terms, knowing theory's famous wariness in front of the historical paradigm, in favor of genealogies, synchronic structures, or becomings, but at least in terms of an internal turn within the realm and the meaning of theory, a Kehre, in German, in intellectual history, according to which, in France, in a matter of a few years, say, between the beginning of the Algerian War and the end of May 68's aftershock, to take two very random dates, theory has evolved, has changed from a specific dialectical position to a metonymic or hybrid discourse inducer. From a form of dialectical comprehension in science, law, or philosophy to an almost intransitive counter discourse. From a Hegelian and post Hegelian seizure of given objects to a detotalized, almost objectless approach. Or again, from transitive thought to this kind of, to a new kind of meta-philosophy. While evolving also from well-demarcated disciplinary contexts to a completely transdisciplinary open field, although closely related to literature, politics, and psychoanalysis, and to the battle sites these three have become. Or to make this long story shorter, and go this time to the heart of the matter, thus probably closer to French thought than uh, to the inflation of campus-based theory, I would opt for a much more trivial formulation. Theory used to make sense, if not to frame sense. And sometimes in the third quarter of the 20th century in France, theory joyfully stopped to make sense, cracking existing frames. Theory used to be reasonable, probably more than rational. And for some reason which remains to be fully explained, theory turned crazy. Yes, mad. Of a madness that involves an internal split, a strange parting from oneself, a radical assumption of contradiction, but all in a non-dialectical way, which is what I would like to suggest. So my first point will be the breach. What has broken for this change that I briefly um, described to occur? And that is the French crisis of old style theory or of general dialectics. Again, 
theory's old definition are neither strictly philosophical nor, in fact, very exciting. The dictionary refers to an organized set of concepts, a structured set of oppositions, or simply a general doctrine and school of thought. And in the middle of the 20th century, right before the breach of the crisis in question, <coughs> theory is, pres is present as a key signifier in many fields. In sciences, hard or soft, it is a general model or a working frame, a cadre de travail. In mathematics, it is a set of propositions of which some are undecidable. In law, or legal theory, it is a general solution to an unprecedented problem. In economics, it is a fully structured explanatory model, as in the famous uh, John Maynard Keynes uh, economical theory. In American pragmatist thought, it is a specific practice <clears throat> within philosophy's investigation about truth, but with keeping in mind Charles Sander, Sanders Peirce's famous motto, in order to be profound, it is necessary to be dull. In American generative linguistics or transformational grammar, in the works of the early Noam Chomsky or of his mentor Zelig Harris, it is a general and organized hypothesis on the workings of language. They use the word theory quite a bit. And in continental philosophy, what is theory? Or at least, what was it at that exact time? <clears throat> Already present in Kant's philosophy of knowledge, theory in the classical sense of modern philosophy, is derived, above all, directly from Hegel's dialectics. If the word is quite uncommon in Hegel's work, theory is one specific moment of the dialectical process, located somewhere between the practical spirit and the free spirit, as he states, for example, in a chapter of his Philosophy of Mind way before the dialectics fulfilling into the speculative mind, that objective dialectics imminent to the real, but at the same time more powerful than the practical stage. Insofar as, I quote Hegel, theoretical work produces more effects in the world than practical work. It can even revolutionize the kingdom of representation and destitute reality, end quote. The change undergone by this dialectical concept of theory with Marx's critique of Hegel summarizes the broader orientation imposed by Marx to the dialectical process. Theory with Marx is both a more specific stage, dialectically tightly articulated to practice or praxis in a deeply historical tension, and a more intense moment as it involves a consciousness of the historical process and thus conditions revolutionary agency. But in both cases, Marx's and Hegel's, theory is circumscribed, being one stage or one character in the adventure of the world's transformation, in the Bildungsroman that dialectics offers us to unveil a subject of history, if one is to use the narrative terminology deliberately chosen by Judith Butler in her first book, which is on the French Hegel, titled Subjects of Desire, Hegelian Reflections in 20th Century France. It is this specific yet problematic location of theory within the dialectical process, which is suddenly set in crisis, uh, largely put in question in French Hegelianism and Marxism of the mid 20th century, uh, most spectacularly maybe in the work of Louis Althusser. Theory, is a recurrent word in Althusser's work. And that's a difference maybe with most of his contemporaries. And it is, as we know, the very title of the famous book series he has run for many years at Edition Maspero Theory. But it is already a kind of maddened theory, as if Althusser was unwillingly bridging the gap between 19th century dialectics and late 20th century anti-dialectical French thought. Theory in his work, is not only a superior form of historical knowledge, as when Althusser reinterprets Marx as a theoretician, theoricien of capital, against his then dominant readings, his socio-economic or humanistic or moralistic interpretations. But it is also the only viable way in Althusser 